here to talk more about this and to give us some details. If we pass through gamma rays along the difference between KWAP and KWAP. It's for us to choose the best telco package to avoid money being misspent. What matters? What matters? What matters? What matters? What matters every Wednesday, 11.15 a.m., only on Tracks FM. Don't miss it. Good morning, Malaysia. 19 minutes past 11. Also here coming to you live from Angkasa, Puri, Kuala Lumpur. Hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday. Yes, it's the 12th of October. And today's interview feature is going to be about this topic, which we happened happened recently, about the dissolution of a parliament. So make sure that you head over to our Facebook account right now at Tracks FM Official because we are currently live as well. And today we have our special guest, Professor Dato Dr. Sham Rahayu Abdulaziz. She's a lecturer from University Islamic. University of Malaysia, International Islamic University of Malaysia. Good morning, Professor. Hi, good morning, Otto. How are How you are today? You? I'm fine. I'm Thank doing you. great, alhamdulillah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, in light of recent happenings, now, can you please explain to us, the Parliament was dissolved three days ago after Budget 2023 was presented. What will happen if, uh, right now with Parliament, which has been dissolved? Okay. Um, first, we may find situations where the parliament is dissolved. Now we understand that the parliament is dissolved because we are going for another general election, right? And whatever happened earlier, like uh, budget uh, presentation that happens a day before the dissolution, um, so it stops there, it ends there until the new government is elected and appointed. And um, the dissolution most important is because uh, we are going for another general election, and a new government will be new members of the new members of the election. Sorry, the new members of the Dewan Rakyat will be elected, and they will form a new government later on after the uh, general election is conducted. Now, what are the circumstances that will allow early dissolution of parliament? Um, uh, so far, the Malaysian, our Malaysian experience is that um, the early, what we call premature dissolution, premature means uh, the dissolution that takes place uh, before the parliament reached the age uh, of five years, because the parliament's lifetime is five years, according to Article 55 of the Federal Constitution. And the dissolution, if the dissolution takes place before the expiry of five years, that is what we call as premature um, dissolution. It may happen in few uh, situations. Uh, so far, the Malaysian experience only two situations. One is because the prime minister or the um, chief minister or menteri besar at the state level lost the what we call uh, confidence, eh? the support or the confidence from the members of parliament. And secondly, when the prime minister um, exercising his prerogative to go for early election or premature election uh, before the expiry of five years. So uh, these two situations uh, where parliament may be dissolved earlier than its time, earlier than its mature time, its time to mature in five years. And so far, Malaysian experience, if I'm not mistaken, only once that we reached the age of majority, age of five years, uh, the expiry of five years, the parliament uh, dissolved automatically. Most of the situation, we go for a premature election where the, the parliament or the, sorry, the prime minister or the Jemaah Menteri uh, agreed uh, to have a uh, earlier election and uh, seeking the uh, consent from the Yang Dipertuan Agong for the dissolution. Now, this is, uh, this is, I think, the second time it happened in history with regards to dissolution of parliament. But uh, uh, anyway, what is the caretaker government? Okay, upon the expiry or upon the dissolution of the parliament, uh, all members of parliament are no members of parliament. Therefore, it disqualifies everyone. Uh, from becoming the prime minister because the ca- the the criteria or the qualification to become a prime minister is he is a member of the Dewan of the Dewan Rakyat. So in the situation where uh, dissolution means the members of the Dewan Rakyat are no longer members of the Dewan Rakyat, 
Therefore, uh, the caretaker government is the government as an interim government. A government for a, a shorter period of time is not a full term of full term of government. Then this is a, the government that will take care of the country at a time when there's no members of parliament, there's no uh, members of the Dewan Rakyat. I think uh, it has to be noted also when we say that dissolution of parliament, although the word parliament is used, but it's actually dissolution of Dewan Rakyat. The Dewan Negara or the Senate is not subject to dissolution. So at a time when the parliament is dissolved, uh, there's no consultation body, there's no forum but uh, representing the people, then uh, we have a caretaker government. The caretaker government is a government, it's an interim government at a time when the parliament is dissolved, then its duty is only to ensure that the smooth running of the country. But most important is that the caretaker government uh, must not... Uh, uh, must not create any uh, what we call or involve in any huge or any big policy and also not to spend more than what had been allowed or what had been approved by the previous year budget. So they cannot introduce a new scheme for anything taken from the budget which has not been passed by the parliament. But the Kataka government is only to make sure that the administration of the country is conducted, but it cannot introduce a big new policy, but only to deliver the policy that have been introduced before, and also cannot um, introduce a new budget or spend new money which has not been passed by the budget earlier. However, in Malaysia, we haven't got any specific guidelines in terms of law or guidelines in terms of uh, what we call subsidiary uh, legislation as far as uh, what amount to duties and responsibilities of the caretaker government. What we are talking about now, like you, you cannot spend more, you cannot do uh, serious policy or cannot make uh, policy, new policy on big matters, uh, it's just, uh, it just our reliance on the other countries' practice. There's no specific um, there's no specific guidelines or procedures or legal legal documents that describing to us what are the what are the powers uh, functions and duties of the caretaker government. I think in future time we should have uh, these guidelines. Or otherwise, it's always been a political uh, discussion and it being considered as political debate on what can be done or what cannot be done without a clear picture or without black and white uh, rules as far as the caretaker government is concerned. And another thing is uh, the phrase caretaker government is nowhere mentioned in our federal constitution. Probably a new thing that we uh, must uh, discuss and propose is that uh, to provide for at least a little sentence or a small provision in the constitution to allow, to allow for the making of uh, guidelines or standards that we want to we want to impose on the uh, caretaker government. But I, I think that it's quite clear that caretaker government cannot do or do more than what has been uh, passed by the parliament earlier, and the need for us uh, to get uh, a clear a clear indication or the clear provision on describing the uh, powers, duties, or position of the caretaker government in our law. Uh, that would um, you know encourage yeah. more caretaker governments in the near future. But I that's just me. Right? <laughs> that's just me. But anyway, uh, we're talking to Professor Dato Dr. Shamrahayu Abdul Aziz. She's a lecturer at International Islamic University of Malaysia with the topic of dissolution of parliament. So thank you so much for currently live as well right now on our Facebook page. I'd just like to say a big quick hello to Ronnie Sitz. Says good morning. Hello. Good morning to you. Uh, Carol Sherling, good morning to you as well. Patricia Lim Li Tiang, thank you so much for saying hello as well. Uh, Rose Tio, and uh, yeah, that's it. So make sure that you share this Facebook live as well. And should you have any comments or you want to like join the conversation, you can do so. Leave a comment on our Facebook page. And also, if you want to call, do call at 03-2282-5491 or 03-2282-4746. Now, we're going to go for a short break, and we'll be right back with our steam guests right here on Tracks.
here to talk more about this and to give us some details. If we pass through gamma rays along the difference between KWAP and KWAP. It's for us to choose the best telco package to avoid money being misspent. What matters? What matters? What matters? What matters every Wednesday, 11.15 a.m. Only on Tracks FM. Don't miss it. Good morning, Malaysia. 33 minutes past 11. Hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday, the 12th of October. And uh, today's interview feature has something to do with the dissolution of uh, Parliament. And today we have a esteemed professor, Dr. Sham Rahayu Abdul Aziz, lecturer at International Islamic University of Malaysia. And we're talking about this particular uh, topic as well. So if you want to check us out, you can always do so via our Facebook page at Tracks FM Official. We are currently live right now. So if you have any comments or you'd just like to just share the this uh, particular information to your friends, please do so at T R A W X F M O W F I C I A L. And thank you very much to Roland from Mili Miri who actually uh, gave a comment with regards to the dissolution of Parliament. But anyway, uh, back to the topic at hand. When we're talking about caretaker government, Professor, uh, to what extent is the caretaker government allowed? You know, to govern the nation. Um, the purpose of having. Um uh, having caretaker government is to make sure that the state administration or the country's administration is mostly run because most of the time the law provides that for any any action to be done by the any agency the government ministries uh, we need approval uh, we need I mean in the practice lah we need the people the public servants uh, need uh, recommendation approval from the minister therefore at a time when the House is dissolved, or the Dewan Rakyat is dissolved, we still need the minister for the purpose of smooth running of the administration of the country. But the point that we were discussing earlier, that I mentioned earlier, is about to what extent that the powers of the of the caretaker government and uh, what are the main functions, the main duties of the caretaker government. Yes. So I've answered the question, the main function, main duty is to ensure the smooth running of the country. Uh, in terms of the government agencies, they need the uh, recommendation, approval, and also the guide from the uh, minister. And the scope, the limit and the scope of the caretaker government is quite unclear here in Malaysia because we don't have specific law regulating it or we don't have specific law specifying, prescribing uh, what are the scope and powers of the uh, caretaker government. So basically, as I mentioned earlier, the powers and uh, the scope of powers of the and the responsibilities of the uh, caretaker government is not much. It's not as 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 huge as big as uh, as wide as the scope of powers of the full term government. Uh, what can be done? What can be done by the caretaker government is only to uh, to run the policy or to exercise the policy that have been introduced before, and to spend the budget which have been passed by the previous. Uh, parliament and they cannot introduce new budget uh, they cannot introduce the caretaker government cannot introduce a new budget or new expenditure for the country and uh, except to to spend what had been approved by the parliament mm-hmm. earlier. Now, there's, since uh, we did talk off air with regards to the clear guidelines, and uh, many mm-hmm. have been uh, suggesting mm-hmm. and proposing to have a clear guidelines with the uh, caretaker government, and how mm-hmm. long has that been so far? Mm-hmm. I mean, this has been discussed in the, our arena, like, in people involved in uh, political, I mean, in political scientists and mm-hmm. also the legal people. We've been talking about this more than 10 years ago. So that the government should be serious in providing guidelines for the caretaker government. Mm-hmm. I think uh, in future time we should have one, and there should be uh, people themselves, or probably through civil society or NGOs, that they can propose for the government and make it an agenda. Why this is important? Uh, this is important because the caretaker government, um, we we uh, being having power as a caretaker government. We should not allow the caretaker government to utilize uh, the government agencies for the sake of any political party. Mm-hmm. We want it to be neutral, to be fair to all political parties that will be contesting in the general election. But somehow, um, I don't know, there's probably some reasons why the government uh, 
uh, we're busy with other things yeah. and not uh, providing uh, uh, serious in making the guidelines. But in future times, I think we must make this understood by the uh, to the people, uh, understand mm-hmm. by everyone. Uh, another thing I want to, if you have question or two, I want to explain something else. Oh, please, please do. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, there was question to posted to me. Uh, what's the difference between interim uh, prime minister and a caretaker government? Yes. I don't know whether you have the same thing in your mind also, Otto. I do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what is interim prime minister? As we we've been listening to the terminology at the time when prime uh, prime minister that time was Tun Mahathir, who who wanted to tender resignation and the resignation was accepted by the Yang Diputuan Agong and later on in a few hours then he was appointed as the interim prime minister at that time. That interim prime minister, there's no such terminology in the constitution as well as similar to the caretaker government. The word is not used in the constitution. But uh, when I read the Gazette appointment i mean when every appointment of, of of the prime minister or the minister it has to be gazetted the purpose is that is to announce to the people that to make it legalized and get legitimize the appointment we have to gazette it gazette means it has been printed in the government uh, in in the government list that these are the things uh, this these are the people who have been appointed as the prime minister so when i look at the gazette uh, it looks like the Prime Minister Tun Mahathir at that time was appointed by the provision through the provision of Article 40, Clause 2A. Article 40, Clause 2A is a full-term Prime Minister. Mm. So it, it, it's, it's, the interim is only for an interim period of time. It's not about the interim powers, interim interim duties of the Prime Minister. Mm-hmm. There is the interim in terms of he will be Prime Minister until a new government is appointed. Uh, but then uh, the full powers is given to him. I mean, to the prime minister, if he's appointed as he's appointed as the interim uh, prime minister, according to Article 40, Clause 2A of the Federal Constitution. And at the time when Tan Sri Moyidin Yassin also um, he tendered resignation, and he was appointed as a caretaker prime minister. Mm-hmm. The caretaker prime minister, as well, I mean, uh, similar to. The word interim is nowhere also found in the constitution. Yeah. But it was as a prime minister under Article 40, Clause 2A. Because there's no other provision in the constitution which gives powers to the Antipatuan Agot to appoint prime minister unless Article 40, Clause 2A. That is a full term prime minister with full powers, mm-hmm. but for interim period of time. That is the interim period of time. But the caretaker government is the practice, um, is the practice that we had since early uh, of our Madeka day also, at the time when the parliament is dissolved, there's a caretaker government, it's not a caretaker prime minister. So in two cases uh, earlier, where interim prime minister Ton Mahadeh and also interim prime minister Tan Sri Mohidin Yassin, it was an uh, individual person as the interim prime minister. But as far as the caretaker government is concerned, the whole cabinet become a member of caretaker government. The caretaker government means caretaker Jemaah Menteri. So the mm-hmm. cabinet of uh, uh, for caretaker at the time when the parliament is dissolved. If you remember, we recall Tuan Mahathir and Tan Sri Moyidin Yassin were the interim prime minister, but the parliament was not dissolved at that time. Yes, yes. I think mm-hmm. uh, should there be such guidelines, particularly with regards to this uh, topic mm-hmm. as well, interim government, caretaker government, is it timely? Mm-hmm. Because the way, okay, the way that I see it in my own opinion is that, you know, people mm-hmm. are trying to work around with the law right now. And yeah. I, it was not thought of before back in the day when, um, when yeah. the when constitution was created. So uh, mm. should there be a more amendments to the constitution or should there be you no know, laws to it? Since you mm. did mention about mm. the caretaker of government having guidelines to it, should mm. there be added more amendments to the uh, you know, law? Yeah, that is a better one. Mm. Uh, the choice to have a constitutional amendment to empower the parliament to make guidelines for the um, for the caretaker government, the powers, duties, mm-hmm. responsibilities, and all. So, uh, if we have that in the constitution, it must make stronger and more accountability is given. Mm-hmm. That is to say, to make sure that the members in the Jemaah Menteri who become the caretaker government 
is more is has the responsibility or has the accountability for the future parliament. Probably is the future parliament to be appointed, members of parliament newly elected, and they can discuss what has been done by the uh, Keteke government at the time when the parliament is dissolved. So it's more accountability, more responsibility being imposed on the Keteke government. So um, they should more responsibly carry out their duties. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. So it, it would be the better choice if you have, if we have constitutional amendment. Mm-hmm. But if not easy, if if it is not easy for members of parliament to do it, yep. it's probably it's much better we can do administratively for having a guidelines as initial step. Yes. So the end result that we should have constitutional amendment. Okay, we're talking to Professor Dato Dr. Sham Rahayu Abdul Aziz, lecturer of International Islamic University of Malaysia, talking about the dissolution of parliament. We're going to take another short break right now and be back with the good professor right here on Tracks FM. Good morning, Malaysia. Here to talk more about this and to give us some details. If we pass through gamma rays along the difference between KWAP and KWAP. It's for us to choose the best telco package to avoid money being misspent. What matters? What matters? What matters? What matters every Wednesday, 11.15 a.m. Only on Trax FM. Don't miss it. Good morning, Malaysia. On to here, coming to you live from Angkasa Puri, Kuala Lumpur. Also live on our Facebook page right now at Tracks FM Official with our esteemed guest in this, in of course, online right now, Professor Dato Dr. Sham Rahayu Abdul Aziz, lecturer of International Islamic University Malaysia, and talking about dissolution of parliament. Now, without wasting any further time, a professor with Malaysia still in the midst of economic recovery as well as the current monsoon season, is it wise for the decision to made during this point in time? <laughs> I think many of us have been speaking on the same uh, issue here, Otto. Mm-hmm. That somehow, um, it was a mixed feeling uh, to listen to the announcement made by Ahmad Muhammad Perdana Menteri. I think many of us have a mixed feeling. Mm-hmm. Some would say that it's better to go for people mandate, uh, going for another general election, than to ensure that the government that we as we elect later uh, become a full-fledged government, full term government that will be supported by the members of the public or the voters or the electors um, agreed to them to become the uh, government of Malaysia instead of changing the government due to people uh, party defection. You know, that, that is Understood. actually yeah. the problem. <laughs> um, however, in the midst of everything, we are in the recovery process. We are within the within the um, within the time where we are going for for uh, recovery from economics and also uh, public health. Yes. Hope, um, of course, is our sincere hope that the government, I mean, the government will do their job well and people will choose the the right people to become the, to the kind of future government of Malaysia. Yes. Of course, uh, it also need a very strong commitment by all, from all people to be, uh, to be participative, uh, to be active in, in the general election. At the same time, we want politically stable. We want economic situation of the Malaysians. All all Malaysians are stable and is yeah. within control. The public has is in control. Then we have to balance all everything yeah. somehow. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Prof- Professor, I've got a question uh, from our listener over here. It says, uh, uh, how long can the, the election be deferred due to natural disaster? Is that a case there? Mm, so far, we haven't got any experience of the country, but at the few places, a few constituencies like B- Bugaya, Batu Sapi, and Greek last time, mm-hmm. uh, it was urgent in, ter- in terms of uh, the time because of uh, pronouncement or proclamation of emergency. As far as our general election is concerned, from the date 10 October, uh, we have 60 days uh, for the, um, within that 60 days, the general election must be conducted. We must have the general election within that 60 days. Mm-hmm. However, let's say we decide to have on the 5th of November, for instance, right? So at that very particular time, let's say Selangor having a heavy rain in Kuala Lumpur like early this morning that we have uh, banjir kilat everywhere Mm -hmm. and then uh, people cannot go for election. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's the time where probably the SPR is also given a power to given a jurisdiction and power or 
a responsibility to make sure that everybody has uh, the opportunity to go and vote. Wow. So at this particular time, the SPR has to take action. I see. If that happens. If that because, situation uh, happens, okay. If that situation happens, uh, so long it's within 60 days. I see. But uh, if it expires 60 days, let's say a very serious, a very grave uh, situation that we cannot proceed with a general election in uh, 60 days, mm -hmm. then there must be a proclamation of emergency. Uh, because see. there's no other way that we can uh, postpone uh, the general election. Yes. Unless uh, like uh, the situation is so grave that we need to postpone then there's no other there's no other way to overrule that 60 day rule, 60 days rule it must rule by proclamation of emergency i hope that does not <laughs> happen but anyway thank you so much professor yes. um if you have anything else do you have anything else that you'd like to wish to our listeners right now <laughs> of course we wish malaysia a, ha a very happy malaysia la, going for general election and we focus ourselves and i hope the younger generation like people age 18 will participate will actively participate in the general election because the truest election is the most people go for the general election therefore that will be the truest democracy we have in malaysia we want to um, keep alive for the democracy let's Exercise our right. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank right you so much. As well. Thank you. Thank it's you so much. It's not only a right, it's also a duty for all and everyone. Yes. Thank you, you Otto. Okay. You heard it right here on Tracks Momentum. Thank you so much, Professor, for coming. It's my great pleasure. Yeah, thank okay, you. Thank you. <laughs> all right, there you go. Coming to you live from Akasa Puri Kuala Lumpur and online, Professor Dato Dr. Sham Rahayu Abdul Aziz, a lecturer at International Islamic University of Malaysia, talking about dissolution of parliament. So, once again, thank you so much for those who are actually online as well. Ronnie C, thank you so much for uh, asking that question. And uh, yeah, so that's it. We have the news coming up at the top of the hour and uh, we'll be right back with more stories right here on Trax FM. Good morning, Malaysia. Here to talk more about this and to give us some details. If we pass through gamma rays along the difference station. between KWAP and KWAP. It's for us to choose the best telco package to avoid money being misspent. What matters? What matters? What ma matters? What matters? Every Wednesday, 11.15 a.m. Only on Tracks FM. Don't miss it.